Salt Lake City, they're kind of old world. So you take them an idea like the container house. Now I took this into them. It took them, oh, first of all, 60 days before they finally realized I was building them out of containers. Most people get scared with looking at construction desks. They go in there and the guy says, it'll cost you hundreds of thousand dollars to even do something, even to think about doing that in the engineering. And I looked at him and I said, God, you know, uh, no, it's not. And he started arguing with me. And I said, look, I built the thing in my driveway. Would you like to come see it? And I got myself busted because I had done it in my driveway. They like the idea. And I'm always trying to do something in a creative means for our city. I keep looking at how we can take this to the next level and get it to the point where affordability. But using small little build-it-yourself style, okay, and this is just a plain welded plate. So you have your two by sixes, okay? This goes down. Here's your corner foundation that comes in. This okay. is not a, a big construction project. And some of the designs I'm coming up with is taking a conventional box like this and just building nothing but the corner casings. And then everything else, if you want a window in there, we add the window in. You want the wall in there, you put the wall in there. simple modifications of the floor plan and then however you would decide to make your room is how you you orchestrate it it's just modules and they just get bolted together this is the Sarah house which is a container home these are two 40 foot high cube containers they're eight foot wide 40 foot long and nine foot six tall When we designed the house, we designed the house so that it has a very large front covered porch. So that way it puts the eyes and people back into the neighborhood. Well, if you notice on the houses of either side in this genre, we have one here that was built in the 20s, where you can see the kind of the front porch where it was being utilized. Now we have a house that's built in the 1950s where the front porch has kind of gone away. And with this style of house, we're again trying to reintroduce a front porch as a gathering place for neighbors to visit, an idea of keeping an eye on the street, and just a, a nice welcome to your home. So as you come in to the house, you'll come into a front porch, and then you'll enter into the, the start of where the shipping containers begin. Both of these containers, we've left the ceiling natural here because we kind of like the character of the design of it, but then on top of this we have insulation, and then we've got above this ceiling, we're at approximately R45 in insulation, and then we have a rubber membrane roof on top of it. Okay, The insulation in the walls, we're using Echo Bats, which is a insulation made with a binder of sugar corn. And then we've also used biofoam as a base. So on our walls, we're right around R26 in insulation. We put in Claire Story windows above, lots of glass so you don't have a lot of need for turning on lights during the day. The window casings, I'm just using the old traditional 2x4s, so it has kind of an Amish look to it, but it's simple, and it's, we're trying to make it as inexpensive as possible for the next person. Once you came in from the house, it's a single long wall kitchen. No fancy islands. Everything's very simple, easy access. I think it's, it might be perfect for an older person because it's all on one level. You know, everything here, I'm trying to make it so it's non-physically obsolescent for anybody. We did not put any ceiling fixtures up either. We're using light sconces because we're thinking the person that's going to be here may be a senior and they're not going to have the ability to be able to change light bulbs. So everything's kind of low level. And then it's a very open floor plan. Here in the corner, we're figuring this is where they'll put their chair and couch and table. Dining room table can be here. And then I put this, this is actually wood flooring, but I put it on the wall just to give it kind of a more of a dramatic effect. Then here we're starting, I'm going with the small point of demand Renai hot water heating system. 
this is one of those systems that it's gas fed, but if you turn it on, you can walk away. The furnace system will be up here, and we're going with what is called a mini split, which is a small little Mitsubishi system. It has a point of eye system that will actually track you and point the heat source towards you wherever you are. So we're doing away with all of the ducting. The seam here that you see going down the center where the containers were actually connected and welded together, this will get a box beam out so it has a nice finished detail like the rest of the windows. This space is something that we designed. It's, it's a flex space. So if you're, a, if you're a grandparent and you have a child that you're keeping an eye on for the day, you've got a spot for a day bed. You also have a spot for a computer, so it's away from the main. But it's that central area that kind of the catch-all for your office, your desk. More people are going towards a computer space than they are the home theaters. We went with an oversized bathroom thinking that a caregiver might you know, be needed in a situation here. So this person's not going to have to move out of this house and move into some place because it's more physically accessible for them. The shower is oversized that will be able to hold a person in a walker uh, or somebody that has some physical limitations. Uh, we have enough space to put in dual sinks, but we're not going to. We're just going to go with a, a common sink. And then again, we've ringed it with glass windows so you have a uh, a nice feeling of yet privacy, but you have that natural, natural daylight. And then right here on the other side of this is a, a sensible bedroom. So we took one wall and it's completely all glass, so we've got a wonderful view of the mountains in the backyard. But people aren't spending time in their bedrooms like they are used to. And in a house this big, this bedroom is going to be used for sleeping. Pretty much that's it. So we're thinking this will be a wonderful size. We'll have sconces on either side of the bed. We kept the ceiling again natural. We'll have an open closet or an armoire system. And then off to a private patio here. Now behind us, you'll see this is a, this is a Habitat for Humanity home that's being built. Uh, that is a three-bedroom, one-bath home. Uh, its price range is, uh, we think it's 195. This is, uh, we've targeted this one for 108 to 112,000. When we started the process, you know, we had looked at the preliminary numbers. But one of the things here that's so expensive is, you know, our ground cost. You know, I spent $40,000 for the lot. Then the infrastructure underneath it, getting the sewer, water lines, probably an additional $25,000. So you can see where I'm at the house. The house is still coming in at fifty-five dollars to $60,000. It costs a little bit more because you have a certain learning factor here. You can't go to a book of container plans and say, I want to build this. So you're taking something that had been used for the, the movement of goods, and now all of a sudden you're trying to repurpose it for uh, housing. So you have certain factors that you want to work with them. You know? Do you think that uh, mass production would take care of that? Oh yeah. yeah. If we can reproduce these and just change them slightly so that you get a different character of it, it makes it again a, a simpler design and a simpler means of reproducing. So we have a, a shed roof, okay. Uh, just a traditional flat, okay. All of the roofs can fit inside, the container can be shipped, and everything is unpacked and built. And then this is one for gathering rain, as you talked about. These we had designed up so it's like going together like a, an Ikea kit. Everything is contained, everything is inside, but they just have to assemble it. In much the same way, the sears, but everything's going to be pre-cut, pre-fit. One of the things with mobile or manufactured housing that we see, the neat thing about both of them is the fact that they're built inside an environment where the quality can be controlled. When Frank Lloyd Wright, he had looked at the style of producing something of what Henry Ford had done with the Model A, which was to come up with a small, uh, contemporary, well-built, very attractive home in an affordable scale for everybody. Almost of what the Sears homes were prior to that. Keeping things very simple. I think if shipping containers been in, uh, around at that point in time, I think Mr. Lloyd Wright would have been using them in some applications. 
container costs will run anywhere between $1,700 and say $4,000, depending upon if you're close to a coastal city. In San Francisco, you could buy a container 40 footer for approximately $1,900. Here in Salt Lake City, the containers will run approximately $4,100. The reason why is because it's just the cost of transport. But the big issue here with containers, like in this situation, the city planning requires and permitting requires that you have the property on site so they can inspect it. It changes it. So if I had done any of the electrical prior to installing the house, if I had done it at the factory, they wouldn't have been able to do it. It had to be on the foundation for them to inspect it. This is actually the foundation. This is a three foot by three foot engineered insulated foundation. And then the containers are actually welded to the foundation. And it's a full perimeter. This house did not require that foundation, but because the code says that you have to do a full perimeter foundation in Salt Lake City, in this, it, it was mandatory. Even though this house, like containers, are designed to be carried on the corner castings, which we should have been done here. All it did was add to additional expenses. And then we put with a, an oversized carport. In the summertime, we're thinking this will be used as a patio. You know, just a great spot for entertaining. And then in the wintertime, again, it becomes a you know, covered parking. We're still thinking that we have the ability to be able to plant a very good garden here that's gonna allow the people to be able to graze their own vegetables. But you see, we have chickens, roosters, they're all over. Goats. These are. Uh, this is a polygamous family, and it starts here and it goes all the way down the block. And they've been here before pretty much most of the city was founded. And there's usually a horse in the front yard here. We just enacted the ability to be able to have chickens, goats. These guys, of course, can have them already because they are originally here as a farm. This area was all well known as being a farm area at one time. But we still have some of these big old lots here that we're still trying to bring in even our small little mini farms. You know, something where people has the ability to be able to grow their own vegetables. These developers come in, the first thing, gated communities, home theaters. You know, it doesn't do anything for it. I want to get that small house mentality where it's, you know, it's smaller homes. People have less possessions, but they have important possessions. 55% of people are living single now and they're not looking at you know this type of house. This type of house is there and it's perfect. 